Amanda here. So today I'm going to share how I'm going to make the journal cover for my Queen Bee journal, which is our July journal in joy. So this is the Queen Bee collection. I do have a video sharing the whole entire collection. It is obviously bee themed. It's beautiful. It's stunning. And that's what we're going to use. So I'll leave a link below to where you can get the collection and where you can see a video of every page. So I'm going to make a hard cover journal cover, a hard journal cover <laughs> using chipboard. So I've cut my pieces. Now I've cut mine to um, six by eight and a half. I can never remember. Yes, six by eight and a half. And the spine is two inches by eight and a half. Okay. So if you are using letter size pages, what you want to do is determine the size of your journal pages. So say this is a journal page. Okay, when it's folded in half, that's the width and the height of my journal. So I make the height of my cover a quarter of an inch taller from the top, a quarter of an inch taller from the bottom and a quarter of an inch wider at one side only one side it doesn't need to be wider here just on three sides a quarter of an inch wider okay so you can work that sizing out based on your own size so i'm going to first of all i'm going to attach these three pieces together using this fabric tape okay so i'm just going to I'm doing it slightly different to how I've done them before. I'm not going to wrap all the edges because I'm going to wrap this. I'm just going to strengthen the spine area with the fabric tape and then I'm going to wrap it with um, craft ca lightweight craft cardstock. It's actually scrapbooking paper, but I want my journal cover to be craft coloured. So I'm going to do, uh, let me think, one... I'll just do two and a bit. I can overlap it because it's nice and thin. Two and a bit. So about there. Okay. Do that twice. We only need two pieces. Um, I have done this before where we wrap all the way around the edges with black so that we've got a black edge all the way around. Um, so you don't then need to wrap it with any cardstock or anything. You can just layer your pattern paper over the chipboard and overlapped and you've got a black border. But we're doing, I'm doing it different this time. Oh, so I like to change it up a bit. So a lot of you may well have this. If you don't have this, you can use something else to strengthen. We're just strengthening these joins in the spine. So you could use Tyvek, you could use anything, so long as it's easy to... Um, what they might call it stick paper to and it's thin and not bulky don't use something like duct tape um, because it's too bulky so this is quite a long piece so i'm going to lay it down lengthways like so okay and then i'm going to get i'm going to just move it into frame okay are we in frame here we are so what I'm going to do is I've got this long piece here. I'm going to get my front cover. So I'm going for the edge. It doesn't matter at this stage. And you just want to put it about just under halfway. Okay. In the middle of this long piece. Okay. All right. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Doesn't matter if it's not straight. Then I'm going to get a quarter inch tape. And this is Mila to help me with my placement of where I'm going to put oops, my the rest of my pieces. It helps me get the right spacing. Okay, because I like to have quarter of an inch space between mine or as close as I can. It doesn't matter again, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. So that tape there will show me where to put my spine. Okay. So now I'm going to add my spine. Okay, and I'm going to try and just one minute. Try and get it. I want to get it quite straight. Again, this tape should help me get it straight and get it lined up. That's another reason why I use it. 
it's a little bit too far up let me just move it down a bit and about there's fine okay so then i can remove this tape here if i can get it out okay and it's cheap tape this one so it's coming off in bits never mind and then what i can do is i can lift this piece over okay i'm going to get one of my bone folders i'm going to push it against the edge before i stick it down so that i've got a nice flush edge there okay then i'm going to lift it over and i'm going to press it on one side but not on the other and then i'm going to push it into that gap okay so it's right up the up against the edge of this piece of chipboard and it's not stuck onto this one yet okay then doing this kind of a motion to kind of push it into that gap then wrap it on that one so that you've got that defined gusset there okay that's gonna strengthen that spine and it's also because you've taken time to push it in really well if you want to layer the whole thing with um cardstock front and back you've got room in there to tuck, you know to put glue your paper down firmly is what i'm trying to say then i'm going to lift this one up i'm just going to turn it around i'm going to pull it so that it's right up against the edge of the top there okay and then pull it and overlap it i'm not worried because it's super thin so you're not going to see it oh, i've got a bubble there hold on a minute let me see if i can get it up Ooh. okay we don't want bubbles in it uh, 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 we do not okay okay let me find my my gussets there push it towards my gusset so i don't get any bubbles and push it in there and then flip it over okay just make sure there's no air bubbles in it and that that tape is right into the gusset like so okay and then that is going to give you your nice strong sturdy edge so i'm going to repeat this with the long strip i'm going to put it on this side here and then i'm going to attach the back cover in the same way i've just done this and then we'll be back okay so i've um basically just wrapped those two joins with the fabric tape just and it is just for strength okay so now i've got my two pieces of 12 by 12 as i say it was scrapbooking paper but it's almost like lightweight cardstock so when i'm using two pieces of 12 by 12 because i want to wrap it all in one one piece okay i'm going to join these two pieces together with some good quality tape or glue all right so i'm going to put some tape right on the edge over there right up to the edge okay right up to the edge just use this to tear it make sure you've got coverage end to end and then you want to burnish it let's see if i can find my handy dandy burnishing tool that my lovely friend rachel gave me okay and then remove that and then overlap them and join those two pieces together so what i'm looking to do is i'm looking to join them together right up to the edge of where that i can see that shiny tape okay so let me just get one corner right first there and it should just follow straight across these pieces aren't necessarily the same size okay that'll do for me because i'm going to cut it down anyway so what um i find is the best is where you've got this join here you don't want it landing in your spine area okay you don't want it landing on a gusset area okay so what i tend to do is i'll put this to the back where this seam is on the back cover 
okay because it'll cover over with pattern paper and it's the back of the journal if you have this on the spine or on the gussets it can it can lift easier okay so let me just decide which way around i want it that's a bit messier that side where i've overlapped so i'm going to put that on the inside okay so that none of these ridges show although they shouldn't very much then i'm just going to draw i want about i want about yeah about half an inch i reckon to wrap that half an inch will that be enough half an inch mm. let me think can't remember it's that long since i've done one half an inch i want at least a quarter of an inch there yeah half an inch should be fine um, I think I'll just go to three eighths of an inch. So three eighths of an inch is there. Okay. Let's check it's there. No, that's not three eighths of an inch, Amanda. I'm going to do five eighths of an inch, I beg your pardon, just to be on the safe side. So that's five eighths. And it's about right five eighths from the top about right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just draw a line here and a line along the bottom i want to be doing that on the other side don't i i don't want to be doing it on here i want to be doing it on the other side because this is going to be showing sorry about that why we do everything in pencil turn it over <laughs> turn it over so let me just think five eighths move it up that's about right i can more or less do it by eye now five eighths i'm not too worried if it's not perfect some people really take the time over it this journal's only going to me. If I was selling it, I'd use a T ruler and I'd be way more precise. But I don't think I'm selling it. So, I'll just have a look there. Yep, yeah, right. So, I'm going to now draw a line there and a line there so that I know exactly where I'm going to stick that journal. Okay, so I've got my mark in there. Then I want to go three eighths of an inch here, uh, five eighths of an inch there, five eighths of an inch. Uh, where am I? There. Okay. And I can join that up so I know roughly where to cut it. And I want five eighths of an inch here as well. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, there. Yep. Oh, they've gone there. So I am gonna do this very much by my wonky eye. This I'm not too worried. As long as it uh, goes over with at least a quarter of an inch okay then i'm golden now i can cut this extra paper away you can do a full inch all the way around if you like uh, up to you I'm going to be layering the inside with more of this craft card anyway so 
You're not going to see it. Is that going to be big enough? No. No, it isn't. Okay, so now what I can do is I am going to put glue. And this is my Tonic Studio glue. Okay. You could just put tape, I suppose, but I like a bit more wiggle room. In fact, I'm going to use some tape around the edges. So I'm going to put tape all the way around the edges, close to the edge. Okay. But am I going to put it in my gussets? No, I'm not. Yes, I will. Push it into my gusset. And then all the way in with my thumb. Okay. All the way in with my thumb. Where's my card? Tear it. Just going to use my bone folder to make sure that tape is in those gussets. And then I'm going to do the same all the way around the edges and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've decided I've put tape all the way around the edge and I've also put two strips to the side of the first gusset, um, two strips to the side of the second gusset or is there only one there? There's only one. I'm just covering over this black to make sure that it's stuck and then I've put tape on the inside of the spine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to <laughs> remove all of my tape and then I'm going to put a bead of glue down each gusset and I'm going to run glue on this bit here. I'm not covering the whole entire thing with tape because I've only got narrow tape and it's a waste. So I'll use some glue. So I will... Um, Leave this process on, but fast forward it, okay? Okay, so we're removing our tape, then we're gonna add glue in the gussets and all over the chipboard. Then flip it over, line it up with the pencil mark that we've made so that we've not, we know we've got it in the right placement. So I put the far side down first, then push um, the gussets in and then lay the, you know, the back part down. Smooth it all over. Okay, make sure it's all down nicely and then you want to mitre the corners. Um, so you mitre in the corners about um, two thicknesses of the chipboard. So I use scraps, hold them at an angle and make a pencil mark. Then I score all the way around to give the paper some memory and then clip those um, mitered corners. Um, and then I fold it over and use my burnishing tool to give that paper some memory so it knows where it's going. Okay. Then I'm going to add tape all along the edge of the paper. All right, and I'm using tape because then it sticks down immediately. And I'm also going to add glue closer to the edge of the chipboard. So the tape is going to help it stick down straight away, but the glue is going to give us, um, you know, a stronger stick around the edges of that chipboard so that it doesn't lift or bubble. Okay, and that's all we need to do. Um, so I'm lifting the edge there and I'm pressing and then when we get to the gussets I'm concentrating on making sure the paper gets into the gusset before I press it along the rest of the length okay so I'll show you again here so I kind of press one side then press it into the gussets okay make sure it's in there fuller so you've got a defined ridge and then press the other side okay and then when you come to your corners, you kind of flatten the corners with your bone folder, tucking it in and flattening it. I'm just trimming mine because it was a little bit large. I'm adding glue to the edge so it goes on the edge of the chipboard. Fold those corners in and then attach. You'll see me running my bone folder along the top edge of the chipboard. That gives you a flatter look rather than it being rounded. You'll get a flat look. If you do that, do it carefully because it'll depend on what kind of thickness of paper or card you're using just do it gently but it just gives like a squared off look and it just looks really neat okay and that's all we need to do on that section
Okay, so to work out the size, if you want it all in one piece, you could do it in two pieces and meet or overlap here, but I just, it lifts and it looks untidy. So I'd rather overlap two sheets of 12 by 12 again, put the joint to the back and I'll put a pocket there to cover that over. So I worked out, what I did was I measured the width, okay, and the height, and then I took a measurement that was half an inch smaller. So this measures um, 14 and 3 eighths by eight and a half. So I've cut my piece here to 13 and 7 eighths by eight. So it's half an inch smaller on the width and half an inch smaller on the height. So then when it lays over like so, it gives me more or less a quarter inch border all the way around. It's going to be ever so slightly less than that because it's going to go in the gussets. So it's going to pull in a little bit at each side. But it's more or less. It's more or less. Okay. So I'm going to use glue for this. So what I'm going to do first of all is put glue in my gussets. And I'm using glue because I want wiggle room. Okay. I want wiggle room. Okay. And then I'm going to. So we fast forwarded again a bit here. <laughs> so I'm adding glue absolutely everywhere. Okay, later in the video, I'll sh explain that I redid this using a different glue because the Nouveau glue was drying so quick, um, I wasn't able to spend time making sure it was in my gussets properly and it was just lifting. So you'll see me lift this piece of paper back off and use a different glue and that's the reason why. And it's more to do with the kind of paper that I chose to use, I think, rather than the actual glue. Um, it just wasn't sticking. And I think it's because I've got a slight shine on the back of my paper. If you're using plain cardstock, the Nouveau probably would have been fine. So I'm redoing it. And you'll see that before I press down left to right, I make sure it's in those gussets first and on that spine first, then spread the covers left to right. Um, just That will just help it stop that paper from cracking because you've given that gusset lots of room. Okay. Okay, so that's our cover finished. Okay, it's super sturdy. It's going nowhere. If you follow the processes, how I've shown you with making, taking care on the gussets, your paper won't be stressed and it won't crack. Okay, that fabric tape is going to give us lots of strength there. And so that's our beautiful cover finished. It looks immaculate if you follow the steps. So I'm going to show you in the next video, the placement of the eyelets. We'll decorate the spine, then place the eyelets. We're going to do something on the front cover and something on the inside of both of these covers. But I'm going to do it in a second video because this one's gone quite on for quite long. Um, so bear with me, make sure you're subscribed and I will see you in the next video. I'll also show you how I lay my papers down because that is the most frequently asked question. So I'll show you the whole process. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.